Before we actually begin solving some equations, let's go back over our properties, uh, those rules that allow us to be able to solve equations. The first one is called the addition property, and that says that if you've got two things that are equal to each other, then if you were to add the same thing to each one of those, you wouldn't change anything. You can kind of think about it as like a, a balance, a scale balance, where you would have like two cups, you know, one on, on each end. doesn't matter what you have on both sides of the balance. If you add the exact same thing on both sides, it remains nice and balanced. And that's the whole idea behind equations. So the addition property really says you can add anything you want to to both sides of an equation. Just make sure you do it to both sides so you maintain balance. We also have the multiplication property of equality. And the multiplication property says that you can multiply anything you want to on both sides of an equation. Just remember, you have to do it to both sides so that you remain balanced. Now, as far as how uh, general kind of rules or steps for going about solving your equations, probably the biggest and most important thing that I ever tell students is you must do all distribution first. If you don't, then you start running into a lot of confusion about what is technically allowed and what's not. So just make it nice and simple. Do all distribution first, no matter what. Once there's no more distribution to do, then it says combine like terms on each side of the equation. So we're going to look at the left side individually. Combine any like terms that you can and then look at the right side and combine any like terms that you can there. Then you're going to start moving things if you need to using the addition property. Adding or subtracting um, anything you want to to both sides to move things around. And then the multiplication property so that you can get your variable alone. Now, then the, step five says check your answer to be sure that it satisfies the original equation. Sometimes it's easy to kind of get into a, um, you know, kind of a rut sort of, and you just automatically assume that because you've, um, you know, went through all your steps and you've got an answer that it must be right. There are times when the answer is not. So um, we'll see that quite a bit later on in the, in, um, the intermediate algebra course. But you want to make sure and always check your answer to make sure that it does in fact work. OK, let's do a problem. This says solve the linear equation. Now our first step is to see if there's any distribution to be done. And in this case, there is no distribution. So we move to the next step, which is to combine like terms on each side of the equal sign. So over here, on, I'm going to put like a little mark here through the equal, so you can see left side, right side. So on the left side, we do have some y's that we can combine. 3y and 5y is 8y, and then we have our minus 2. Now on the right side, we have y's that we can combine. The 2y and the 4y would make 6 of those y's. And we have plain numbers, the 5 and the 3. So when we add those together, that would be 8. Then it said to use the addition property to, um, to start moving things around. Well, what we're going to do here is, because I need to basically continue collecting my like terms, I need to get my y's together. But in order to move it from the right side to the left, I have to undo this positive 6y. And I'm going to do that by doing the opposite. I'm going to subtract 6y from both sides. That way, now I have 8y minus 6y is 2y. And then I have minus 2 equals, keep everything pretty much lined up, 6y minus 6y is gone. And I have a positive 8 over here. Now I still have things that I can combine. I have the negative 2 and the 8. But I have to move it across the equal sign. So I'm going to have to undo or do the opposite of this minus 2, which is a positive 2. As long as I do it to both sides, that's just fine. Minus 2 plus 2 undoes itself, or is a 0. So on the left side of the equals, we have 2y equals 8 and 2 would be a 10. So now whenever I divide both sides by 2 to get y alone, or doing that last multiplication step, we have y equals 5.